extreme political parties of Pakistan have taken strong exception to Altaf and demand of a separate province for Urdu-speaking residents of Sindh and declared it a controversy towards breaking the country. Altaf Hussain is no stranger to controversies. His phonic orations delivered from London have touched many a raw nerve in the past while has discussed altering since and Pakistan's geography. The fact of the matter is that how India exploits this internal chaos to formulate its invasion plans against Pakistan. This internal chaos will be related to India's internal political changes where hardliner Zionists like Narendra Modi is being brought to power in May and then will India launch a high-intensity war against Pakistan, just as they did in 1971. Now, there are many questions that are arising here in the given scenario. Why Iltaf Hussain demanded a new province and then warned that the demand of this new province can go to the... Later, why he denied his own statement and then went on to suggest the province must be split into two parts, rural Sindh 1 and urban Sindh 2. Is there a strong agenda of India and other external factors behind these demands or behind this political chaos in Pakistan? Today, we will discuss all the aspects of these demands and we'll try to find out who is controlling the politics scenario in Pakistan and wants the breakup of Pakistan, wants the break of Pakistan and what should be done to avoid such extremism in the country. As viewers, you know that I have Mr. Zaid Hamid in my show. Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Zaid Hamid. As you in Pakistan, we are listening to the voices of a separate province that could lead to a separate country. And then we are seeing the Indian phenomena, the Indian political landscape, where we are seeing the hardliner Narendra Modi rising, which can be the possible candidate for the prime minister in India. Before we get started, Mr. Zaid Hamid, with our discussion, prepared a re Then we will start our discussion. Altaf Hussain demand of separate province for Urdu speakers, MQM chief has said, if you do not like Sindhi Urdu speakers, then because the thing can be more serious and if not taken wisely, and a demand for a province could be turned in the demand of a country. Sindhi and Urdu speaking people live together and do not want any division, he added. Pakistan People's Party chairman Bhutto responded on the micro blocking website saying, We will. Do According to the Senator Nasreen Jalil of MQM, people would come up with vast demands if the government failed to address their problems. The fall of Dhaka and other numerous examples are there, and if the sense of deprivation is not taken seriously, people might raise voice for division of the country, she warned. In 1948, Qaidiyaz Muhammad Ali Zina declared in Dhaka that Urdu and only Urdu would be the common language of all Pakistan. In 1971, Pakistan has witnessed the conflict between Bengalis and Urdu-speaking Biharis. This language controversy even Pakistan has been separated from Pakistan. Now the Sarakistan movement also seeks to create separate province for Saraiki people within Pakistan. The Hindu nationalist Bharatiya Janata Party BJP elected Narendra Modi as a chief of its election campaign for May-June 2014 general election. His rise is not a good omen for the Muslims of India in general and Pakistan in particular. Hindu hardliner Narendra Modi, the chief minister of Gujarat, is a polarizing Muslim riots on his watch in 2002. During the riots of 2002, as many as 2,000 people were being killed, mainly Muslims. The cases and investigations against Modi are still pending with the Indian agencies and courts. With the controversial Hindu nationalist Narendra Modi, the BJP coming to power in India next year. In a country founded on the principles of secularism, there is growing fear that how Modi will behave with Muslims and other minorities in India. Yes, Sayyid Hamid, as you saw our we are trying to focus and then trying to figure out a connection between the two. In Sindh, we heard the voices getting a separate province that uh, 
of uh, the demand of getting a separate country as well. And then in India, if we see the, the general elections landscape, we are seeing Narendra Modi rising pretty majorly as the prime minister of that country. So how do you see these two aspects in the two countries? You see, today we are going to discuss one of the most critical elements of this Pakistan and India, but also for the entire Asian region or perhaps the globe itself. Whatever is happening in Pakistan today has a very direct connection with what the Hindu extremists, Hindu fascists, and Hindu Pakistan. Pakistan is undergoing a violent and bloody fourth generation war, a war in which the country is being imploded from within, a war which is designed to destroy the economy of the country, designed polarize the society of ethnic, linguistic, political, religious, sectarian lines, and a war which is designed to wage urban war on the streets of Pakistan, from Karachi to the tribal urban rural center of Pakistan is in a state of war right now, almost annihilating, or threatening to annihilate the very state itself. And this fourth generation war is being waged in tandem with the American AFPAC military doctrine in, East, in the West, in Afghanistan, from where they are sending in the drones and the insurgents, backed by the Indian intelligence raw as well. And it is supposed to follow up by the Indian Cold Start military doctrine, in which the Indians plan a high-intensity invasion of Pakistan once the collapse in Pakistan crosses line for the Indians when they feel the time has come for the Indian tanks to roll into Pakistan. And now what we feel is... But, but then uh, don't we see this weakness of, you know, uh, destroying Pakistan from within is getting much harder from our own politicians? El Tafu sends demand for you a see, separate what, province what is lead to is, a separate country. This democracy that is on Pakistan today, that you see is imposed upon Pakistan today, we have always been calling it a CIA-sponsored democracy. Because all the political parties... Major political parties which are now ruling Pakistan have very strong Indian connections. Awami National Party in Frontier, they are known to be, from last 70 years, they are known to be a strong pro-India asset. Jamiyat Ulma Islam, the religious party, supposed to be, which is... MQM's demand, you think that that's a pro-Indian party I'm coming well? to that. Jamiyat Ulma Islam itself has a very strong connections to Indians, have his very strong connections to the Congress. Similarly, MQM. MQM is almost a separatist party. MQM, the person who has just recently given this threat of breaking Pakistan, is on record going to India and addressing the Indian audience and Indian establishment, Indian intelligence agencies, and saying that making of Pakistan was the biggest blunder in the history of mankind. These are his words. And he actually said, demanded from the Indian intelligence, Indian raw, Indian establishment, that if we want to come back to the fold of India, you should accept us. The division of the subcontinent was the greater, greatest blunder in the history of mankind. It was not the division of the land, but the division of the blood. When India ki government ki puri team se opposition se ye darkhast karunga ke jo Pakistan ki establishment mein aaj ke baad agar koi tana muhajiron ko izzat karne walon ko ye de to main India ki hukumat aur India ke tamam opposition se tamam human rights izzat karne walon ko ye request karunga ke khuda ke liye aap unhe maaf kare aur apne aap bana de back which is an open declaration of war against the state of Pakistan he's a British he sits in London, and then, from then, there, he then, instigates uh, Mr. Zayn Hamid, incident. like you said, that Iltaf Hussain uh, said such serious threat or threatening words. Then why didn't our judiciary, why didn't our state, took any kind of action against him? You see, they are, are a mafia run by a don from London. And the party itself is a one-man show. You eliminate Iltaf Hussain, the party disintegrates. But as long as he lives, he has a... He has a to absolute ruthless, brutal urban violence. And, and when the, that's how mafias operate. You cannot speak against them. And that's why the political... 
And once we air this program also, there's a very high possibility that the transmissions of DIN news may be blocked in Karachi for a few days. See, because this is how MP operates. ARY recently did a program against them, and ARY's transmissions were taken off air. But this, all governments have tried to do operation against their terrorist activities, but their sponsors, they're, they're based in London. The British government is doing money laundering investigations against the chief of Altaf Hussein because the sources of funding are unknown. They have come, they, either they come from India, they come from kidnapping for ransom, or they come from funding millions and millions of dollars and pounds, which British government... But didn't they say that uh, um, MQM and their, their lead on Taf Hussein such a uh, huge follow, you know, following that they are willing to donate him the funding, uh, whatever is needed. You see, you see this, this is what they say, but everybody knows the reality. Everybody knows the reality is MQM being a violent militant organization which earns through lots of illegal, lots of criminal activities. And the fact of the matter is, the point that you started off earlier with is that whatever is happening in Pakistan, how is that connected to the political developments and changes which are coming in India in the next few months? And that is a critical question we must answer today. That Narendra Modi is coming into power. And the world does not know the reality of Narendra Modi. And this is what we are going to explain today. But before that, let me go back to, to the world of 1930s. And Hitler had formed the Nazi party and a fascist ideology was taking hold, taking power in Germany. At that time, very few people in the world could realize that once a madman like Hitler would take ultimate power in Germany, what would be the consequences for the world? Nobody could realize that at that moment. But once the Germany was taken over by a fascist Nazi ideology, which believed in German supremacy, which believed in ethnic cleansing, which believed in global dominance and a greater Germany, all those ideologies, once that man got the power, we know what happened next. 440 million people were slaughtered all over the world. The entire world was set ablaze. World went into a world war. And if Hitler had a nuclear weapon, the, the human race would have been annihilated. Almost at the same time, in India, another Nazi party was formed. People don't know this. In 1925, a Hindu Nazi party was formed called the RSS. It, it's an ab abbreviation for some Hindu, a, a Hindu word, Rashtriya Sevak Singh, something like that. But RSS, again, was an identical Nazi party to what, Germans, what, the, what the German Nazi party was. They believed in Hindu supremacy. They believed in Greater India. In India, from all other communities, Muslims, Sikhs, Christians, minorities, even their own Hindus, which are untouchables, the Dalits. And that Hindu fascist party slowly began to take hold in India between 1925 and 1947 when the partition of India took place. And very few people know this. Let, me, let us make it very clear today. Gandhi, who is a symbol of peace in the world, which is projected by the Indians as a symbol of peace-loving man and his ideology of ahimsa and all these love for humanity, Gandhi was assassinated not by a Muslim, but by a Hindu Nazi fascist from the RSS. Nathuram Godse, when he and his gang assassinated Gandhi because he was preaching tolerance. So they could not tolerate that. And Gandhi was revered and respected like a mini god in India by Hindus. He was assassinated by these RSS. And the man who, who assassinated was later on hanged. He, his cremation was done, but his ashes were not thrown in Ganges River, as traditional Hindus do that. He actually sent, left a will to his RSS political party saying that once you capture Pakistan, once you capture the River Indus, then throw my ashes in River Indus. And this is a greater India, the ex control Burma to Afghanistan to expand the Hindu dominance and but eliminate... Mr. Zayat, I mean, you would like to know that the connection of Nazi RSS and then with Pakistan. Uh, there, uh, right now we're going to go on a break. We'll be right back after a short break.
Welcome back, viewers. We're talking today in our show about the connection of the political scenario in Pakistan and then how it can be a breeding ground for our uh, enemies or our external factors that are watching over us to break us down from, in t uh, from inside. Now, before break, we reached to the point where we were trying to put the puzzle pieces together that how does the Nazi RSS and then what's the connection of these two with Pakistan as of today? Mr. Zayed Ahmed, before going on the break, you were telling us about RSS and Nazi, but how RSS is connected? You see, again, I was with the background of what RSS have actually done they are so vicious and ruthless they can even kill Gandhi for their own objective. And if they can kill Gandhi, then you can imagine what they would do to Muslims or, or other communities. But does RSS exist in today's world in India? Yes, we are coming to that. RSS, after the creation of India, they started to spread themselves into every fiber of the Indian society, in the armed forces, in the education system, in the media, in politics. And today, the BJP, front, the, the Bharatiya, political part Bharatiya, see, party, Bharti Jantia party is actually the political front of RSS. They are the Nazi party of India. And Narinder Modi is, is that monster which has risen from RSS. The BJP and the RSS should reflect as to why organizations and individuals who are allegedly involved in acts of terror draw support sustenance, sympathy, and ideological indoctrination, and the ideology of the RSS BJP combined. So therefore, rather than hitting out at everybody who comes within their range, I think they should seriously interact with them, and they should try and see that such ideologies, such philosophies, give, which give birth to sectarianism need to be purged. I think this is a time for self-introspection for the BJP and if it fails to carry have nobody else but itself to blame. And now he has the same objectives, goals, desire, ethnic cleansing of India, of expanding Indian borders, of, of the supremacy of the Hindu race. So, so BJP is an updated version of RSS in today's uh, time. RSS age. exists today as well as a militant organization, as a militant arm. Their political front is BJP. Even in Indian showbiz, many top personalities that you see, that you worship, the people worship as heroes of the Indian Bollywood media are members of the RSS. And let me give you one name, Amitabh Bachchan. Amitabh is a hardcore Hindu ideologue, a member of the RSS, a frontman for BJP, and believed in the ideologues of When these kind of people, and now, and we have seen from previously, from the last few years, their penetration of, of the Hindu Nazis into Indian armed forces has been so intense that now Indian army is bringing BJP into power. And that is where the most deadly combination has been formed. But then, but then the rise of BJP in India, how can that affect Pakistan? You see, this is not just Pakistan, it's going to affect the globe. The rise of Hitler in Germany, how did that affect Europe and the world? And remember, Hitler was also elected in an election. And BJP is now being elected. He is inspired by Nazism. Their, their track record, Narendra Modi. Has, is, is refused visa in so many countries of the world even today because he is known as the butcher of Gujarat, the man who takes pleasure in burning humans alive. This is the kind of monster we are talking about. This, he, the, 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 the gangs and mobsters, RSS and BJP and Bajrangal, their late ideologue who has recently died is Bal Thakre. And if you look at Bal Thakre's pictures, you will realize that the man is a monster sucking human blood, literally. I'm not exaggerating. That's exactly what they do. But Mr. Zayed Hamid, uh, Narendra Modi, Indians, they consider him as a model Moses. You see, this is the point that Indian nation is controlled by the media. Indian nation is controlled by their weapons of perception management. And that's why I said one of the top ideologues, the 
operators of RSS and BJP, you will find them in Indian Bollywood, worshipped as literal gods, like Amitabh Bachchan. I just gave an example. And these people, when Amitabh Bachchan stands with Bal Thakre and promises to promote his ideology through the perception management weapons of Indian media and film industry, then the Indian nation would be fooled. And that is, and the, and the wise one amongst the Indians know this, Manmohan Singh, the Indian present prime minister, he's a Sikh, he's not a Hindu. And he knows that once the Hindu Zionist will come into power, what they will do to Sikhs also. Because in the, it's the track record in India that almost 100,000 Sikhs have been butchered and killed by these RSS goons because they believe in ethnic cleansing but then, but of then, every uh, other community. Uh, Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, why did he say that the right can be destructive for India itself? You see, this is precisely what we are seeing. The wise, sensible Indians know this that uh, the rise of a Nazi party in India is going to destroy the Indians also because they're just like when the Hitler came into power, he started ethnic cleansing of all communities from Germany. The Jews were exterminated, Muslims were exterminated, all other Christian, all other people who were on non-Germanic races were exterminated. Similarly, this is exactly have been doing it for the last 60 years and now they have enough power. They have relegated Muslims, literally the 200 million Muslims in India, they have literally been relegated to the levels of untouchables. They, there are Christians, uh, we have been decimated, communities which have been eliminated and decimated. The Sikhs have been eliminated, they, they, their, their power has been broken in India and they are being, they will be outcasted in India, just, just like untouchables, the Kashmiri Muslims. And that is why you find that in India, there are 140 separatist insurgent movements working in India which are trying to break India, which are trying to break away from Indian is now going into the hands of Hindu Zionists who will not tolerate any other country unless they convert, revert back to Hinduism. And that's what Manmohan Singh has exactly warned his own nation that whatever we are saying, Manmohan Singh has verified this, that if... So even Narendra the Sikhs are also not being safe if Narendra Modi comes in power in you India. See, this is That's what Manmohan Singh Man is trying to Because the ideology and the belief of RSS is that on India is only for Hindu nation. And anyone who is not a Hindu will not have a place in India. They'll have to be subservient or eliminated. Rahul Gandhi, again, is half Christian. His mother is, is a Christian. And even he has warned his nation and his people that the greatest internal threat which India faces today is not from Muslims, is not from Mujahideen, is not from Taiba, is from Hindu saffron terrorists. And this is seriously considered because for the first time now, the saffron terrorists will get control of the nuclear weapons of India. But then, but then, Zan Hamid, uh, uh, Saab, you all already said yourself that Manmohan Singh is warning own nation about Narendra Modi's getting into power and how can he be dangerous for its own nation. You're saying that um, uh, we have uh, another Gandhi, uh, you know, he Rahul also Gandhi. warned, Rahul Gandhi also warned the nation. And then you're seeing the Aam Admi Party, that's another factor that has raised after the uh, daily legislative assembly elections as, as an external factor. So uh, seeing all these factors being negative towards Narendra Modi, what are the chances of him becoming you the see, Prime Minister of India? See, the fact is that Narendra Modi is now, be, after 60 years of working in the Indian establishment, in the armed forces, the media, they have now a very strong following. And mostly the Hindus don't, the Indians do not know the fascist and the Nazi ideology or the belief of the RSS. They have really camouflaged them very well. But Narendra Modi is only one man who has exposed himself, particularly in the Gujarat riots. And even now, in, in, in Muzaffar Nagar, another district of India, Right now, as we speak, the genocide of Muslims is going on, but India is not ripped. Indian people doesn't know because India is so solidly controlled. And what is happening is, like, just few years back, we know of an incident when a train was bombed which was coming to Pakistan called Samjhota Express. And the allegation was put on Pakistani ISI that ISI has bombed the train. Later on, it was confirmed by the courts themselves that Colonel Prohit, and serving officer of the Indian military saying the bombs and explosives in that train and the links of Colonel Prohit were found all over the Indian establishment, intelligence agencies, raw and the government. And 
that was the first time when the world actually got to know of the of this multi-headed dragon who has now risen his, his its ugly head in India that they have now penetrated in every fiber of the Indian society. And in the coming elections, you will see the entire Indian establishment making sure that BJP should come to power with Narendra Modi becoming the prime minister. And this is what Manmohan Singh has also, and, and Rahul Gandhi has also tried to warn the world. Because if that mad man, the butcher of Gujarat, the man who pleasure and burning humans alive, he becomes prime minister of India, you can imagine the first thing he's going to do would declare a war against Pakistan, already being waged against Pakistan. Pakistan is soft enough now, so they think Pakistan is soft enough. Modi is going but to... But Mr. Zayed Hamid, there's another uh, school of thought on this BJP coming into power that previously when BJP was in power, the relation between the two countries were gone actually better. So don't you see that maybe after BJP gets in power, they will try to recover the same reputation? You see, at that time, with when the BJP, last time when BJP was in power, Pakistan was a solid, strong nation. They could not deploy their fourth generation war against Pakistan at that time. And it was not strong enough at that time to declare a war against Pakistan. How was that uh, BJP not strong enough then and now it's more uh, you see, strong enough? You see, the point is, BJP is probably this is is now in many years they have learned from their mistakes. They have penetrated more into the armed forces. They have penetrated more into the Indian establishment and the secret services. They create the perception that they are the saviors of India. And at the same time, Pakistan after 13 years is now at the weakest level of its defense and security. Our economy is collapsing. Pakistan is under uh, actually imploding the state from within. Corrupt, incompetent governments. We have absolutely sold out media, section of it, insurgencies of Taliban and BLA and Karachi, and the political parties are also compromised. This is the most ideal environment for Indians to roll into Pakistan. The environment is almost as set as it was in East Pakistan in 71 when India demands of insurgency which Pakistan army had to contain. And I personally... So in this kind of scenario, Mr. Zayed Hamid, how dangerous, how uh, killing, how deadly it was from uh, Mr. Altaf Hussain of M2M to demand for a separate province and then threatening that the separate province could change into a country You see, well. I personally feel that this particular demand from Altaf Hussain or and a warning to Pakistanis that a major high-intensity conflict is coming our way. In, let me give you an example. Why am I saying this? In 1971, after the election, when East Pakistan, Mujibur Rahman, the Indian asset, again, he was a political party, but he an Indian asset, he did the results. He, in January, he had decided, he gave a call for a separate province or a separate country. Again, the call started from a separate province and ultimate and total powers to East Pakistan to the, to the separatist government. But in March, they declared the rebellion after months and from March to November the Indian army prepared to invade Pakistan but at for these nine months Pakistan army fought urgencies the urban war on the streets of East Pakistan and this is exactly the scenario that I see now in January in the beginning of January Altaf Hussain has declared given a threat that a country could be broken we see the urban war going on in Pakistan in in Pakistani streets all the police officers and armed forces are being Top officers who have and the recent uh, unfortunate incident of SP you have seen Chaudhry Aslam. From now the viable areas and the economy is collapsing. And Pakistan army for the next seven or eight months would be fighting the urban insurgency. They will be desperately trying to control this urban violence, the resurgence of urban violence. Modi will come into power in June. Top Pakistan army military commanders are going to retire in October. The, the another batch of Pakistan military commanders are going to retire in October. The battle hardened, the more experienced, and who have who have experience of fighting the wars would retire in October. And that's where I feel Indians would have a most opportune time to launch into Pakistan would be somewhere in, around in November, just as they did in 1971. Pakistan still have time to prepare for it. But if the insurgency keeps on going as it is going now, if the war keeps on coming into Pakistan from Afghanistan as it is coming now, if the political parties remain as treacherous and the government remain as incompetent and judiciary remains as ineffective and army remains 
I personally feel that Indian tanks would be rolling through Pakistani cities by November. And this is a threat analysis. This is not a prediction. This but is then, a, this is then, a threat analysis Zahid, based many, on the national security environment today. Don't you think that uh, our Army Chief, Mr. Rahil Sharif, is also keeping a keen eye on all this development that's happening in our neighboring country regarding Narendra Modi as well? You see, he's through new... This is the job of Pakistani media and Pakistani analysts and defense analysts like us and the channels like you to, to expose these threats, to bring out these threats in front of the nation so the leadership can focus on them. And the, the fact, the only reason we are doing this program today is that we as professional security and defense analysts who are seeing the entire region in a broader perspective from a bird's eye view, we can see the connection between the right of Modi and the insurgencies in Pakistan and the urban fourth generation war and the American war aspect which is coming into Pakistan and its similarities with history. What happened in 71 and what happened in Nazi Germany in 1930s. So connecting then, all these then, dots uh, together. But then Mr. Zayed Hamid, seeing all these scenarios around us, uh, we need to know are our politicians aware of these threats that are surrounding Pakistan as of today. Uh, viewers, uh, we're going to go on a short break. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back, viewers. We are talking about the threats that are being faced by Pakistan as of today and are uh, our politicians realizing threats and working together in unity to face these threats or they are demanding a separate province which could lead into a separate country and fighting within with e each other how will they be able to bring up a team that could face the threat countries like India where a person like Narendra Modi might be the expected Prime Minister of uh, India in 2014 election Mr. Zayed Hamid, so now, uh, after we analyze the personality of Narendra Modi, but let me, let me tell you uh, one thing that the Modi supporters are claiming that what happened in Gujarat, the massacre of Muslims in Gujarat, was only a spontaneous reaction of Hindus to the killings of 59 Hindus in a train in Goda. So they're saying that Modi has nothing to do with the massacre of Muslims in Gujarat. This is absolute rubbish. This is absolute nonsense. There's nothing but disinformation and lies and if that is the case why so many com countries of the world use visa to Modi on the ground that he is the he was the chief minister of the province but none of the courts in India has you know uh, got any legal orders uh, in favor of these allegations see, for him it's like in Pakistan you hear that no Pakistani court gives sentence to the terrorist or the TTP because they are so ruthless because they kill the judges because they kill the witnesses, because they kill the police officers. That is why in Pakistan, you, Pakistani court do not convict the terrorists. And this is exactly the same in India also. The but RSS, then, Mr. Zayed Han, BGM, before we get worried from uh, Narendra Modi, before we see Narendra Modi a threat in Pakistan, aren't the Sikhs in, pa in India and Muslims in India and the other minorities in India be more concerned and seeing him as Indians, Muslims are terrified right now. There are about 200 million of them. They have already been relegated to the level of untouchable, lowest caste. They have no human rights in India at the moment. And right now, as we said, we're doing this program. There's a massacre of Muslims going on in, in, in Muzaffar Nagar, another district of India. Muslim women are being raped. They are being dislocated in, from their homes. Their villages are being burnt. And no media is reporting this. And that is, and that's, that's the same place where Babri Masjid issue had taken place in 92. And, and these kind of ethnic cleansing is part of the RSS and BJP doctrine, as we have told you. And in the last 60, 65 years, they had focused within India to gain power, to penetrate in the armed forces, to eliminate all Muslim communities, isolate them, and decimate them. Muslim, according to Indian reports also, Muslims are, the standard of living of Muslims in India is now lower than the untouchable Dalits. Now, if that is the level of 200 million Muslims, Imagine they have no say, they cannot stand up against the Hindu. And if Narendra Modi, the butcher of Gujarat, becomes the prime minister, one can only shiver at the consequences to what he will do to the Muslims of India and also to the Sikhs and also to the other Christians also. RSS has openly declared war against the Christians also. They have burnt churches, they have burnt priests. 
everything is on record. That's what RSS has been doing for the last 60 years. 100,000 Sikhs. Indira Gandhi was killed by Sikhs. You should note that. And, and, and Indira Gandhi was not killed by Muslims. Her, her son Rajiv Gandhi was killed by a Tamil. The fact of the matter is that there is so much frustration and anger in the Indian society that Muslims have not been waging rebellions against in, in the, and in India, except in Kashmir, of course, which is an integral part of Pakistan, and it's an unfinished agenda of the partition. But in the rest of the citizens of Indian state, but so, they have always been butchered. So, Mr. Saad Hamid, if Narendra Modi becomes the Prime Minister of India, what would be the uh, peace process and the progress process between the two, Pakistan and India? Where would that process be standing? You see, they would, the process evaporate instantly and the fact of the matter is as we said that Modi has sensed they are sensing blood they are sensing that Pakistan now is stand weakest at the weakest levels of its security and economy and defense and actual integration the political parties are divisive economy is collapsing armed forces are overstretched and spread all over the country and urban urban insurgency is going on so Narendra Modi his the desire of Hindu Zionists of creating a greater India, of coming up to the level to the river Indus, where they want to throw the ashes of Nathuram Godse, the terrorist who assassinated Gandhi. That desire, they and they would not initiate on any peace process, but on igniting more wars with Pakistan. And in this scenario, that's what we are trying to warn the world: that with if a man, uh, if a Hitler comes into power in India with a nuclear weapon in his hand and a fascist Nazi ideology of ethnic genocide and expansion of the borders of India in the entire Asia, which would affect the entire world. Pakistan and China are two enemies of Mr. Zayed Hamid, Pakistan being a nuclear power itself, do you think it's going to be that easy for someone like Narendra Modi to use nuclear their nuclear weapon against us? You see, it's not the point. The point is that India would is designed that Pakistan should not be able, may not be able to use its nuclear weapons against India. Indians would, that's why the doctrine of the Cold Star, Star do is the purpose is that Indians would earlier. penetrate into Pakistani cities so rapidly, so fast, that Pakistanis would not be able to respond. Within 72 hours. They have not even developed it, improved upon the Cold Star, that they would not even roll. They would in fact strike through their missiles and but air, air power But is our army also got prepared and they did prepare a response within 72 hours to you respond see, back to their if, Cold Star doctrine? If Indians invade using their active strike doctrine, which is even advanced version of Cold Star, that they would not move their ground forces, but strike through the Air Force first, incapacitating Pakistan's command and control center. And then once there's a confusion in Pakistan, then they would roll into Pakistan if that kind of scenario takes place, we have said this earlier also, in the initial burst, in the initial attack, in the initial invasion, Indians would spread Pakistani borders and perhaps even border cities as well. So what you're saying is that the Kayanis Azme no planning will not stand up against India's Cold Star Doctrine you plan? You see, what I'm saying is that Pakistani nation and a state is not standing with the armed forces today. Whether it's Azmeno or any other military doctrine, no doctrine can work without the state and the nation standing behind the armed forces. You're talking about nation not standing behind the uh, armed forces or the politicians not standing behind the armed you see, forces? Altogether, in the organs of the state are not supporting the armed forces. The judiciary is not supporting the minister, the cabinet, the parliament. They're not supporting the armed forces. The political parties are not supporting the armed forces. The media is not supporting fighting a difficult insurgency within its own borders, a high intensity conflict on occasion within Pakistan's own borders. If that is the scenario, no matter how prepared our armed forces are, they would not be able to resist the initial invasion. We will beat them back ultimately. We have tactical nukes that we have developed once we regroup, reorganize, but the initial thrust would be intense. And this we see, I feel that Lahore and Chalkot and all the border cities of Pakistan would come under tremendous pressure if Indians launch proactive strike and then roll their cold start into Pakistan and if the chaos and anarchy and leadership vacuum that we see in Pakistan exist. Narendra Modi coming into power is an open declaration of war against Pakistan. Now, unless Pakistan stands solidly united 
able to threaten India openly and clearly, this war will not be averted. Modi can only be stopped if Pakistan and China form a strong defensive alliance with each other, threatening India from all axes, from all sides, and forming a unite, united Pakistani state, Pakistani army, armed forces, media and politicians must stand united, which right now is not the case. All political parties are disintegrating provincial lines, religious lines, the, the religious terrorists are with religious insurgency and the media is hostile and the but economy Mr. is Zahid collapsing. Hamid, if we it's come, a dangerous scenario. If, if we come back to our internal problem, the recent one in which al Hussain raised a voice of a separate province and uh, demanded a separate country and then denied the next day and said, and uh, uh, you know, he uh, brought through. Isn't he right to a certain level that how the rural and urban Sindh has been divided into a quota system where urban has been given a 40% and then rural has been given a 60%. And, and then he says that even that 40% is also not delivered into the urban area. So if you he see, is demanding for a separate province, he's not wrong. You see, it depends on who is making the demand. If a patriot with a known track record of if a man whose creation of Pakistan was the greatest mistake of history, if he makes such a demand, then you have to take it with great suspicion. With the man with the record of Altaf Hussain, the man who's known as the Dawn of Karachi, the man who's responsible for thousands of killings and assassinations and kidnapping for ransom and extortion, if he makes a demand, especially when we creation, in his own words, that he made a request to the Indian intelligence saying that if we want to come back to you, you should accept us back. If that man makes a demand, we will not accept it. We'll take it as a declaration of war against the state of Pakistan itself, especially when he threatened that it could lead to the breakup of country. Why did he say that? Why did he say that it could lead to what the problems are the people could resolve within itself? You never threaten the breakup of the country. And how would you break the country without the Indian help? And this is what we are saying, that Pakistani society, political parties are now full force. All the insurgents, terrorist groups, political parties, media assets, for the next eight or nine months, you will see the, the last stages of the demolition process going on in the state of Pakistan. So then, Mr. Zaid Hamid, the last 10 seconds, how do we face this threat? How do we stop the clock from proceeding in this direction? Pakistani nation has to stay united. Pakistani state is in danger. If the state is in danger, no constitution, no Supreme Court, parliament, no judiciary, no media will but exist. Pakistani nation has been crushed, Mr. Um, by the system in paying the uh, highly paid bills, the nation uh, problems. How will that nation be uh, alarmed about those external threats that they're Two facing? Two Pakistani institutions still standing, Supreme Court and the armed forces. They must get together and find a solution. If they cannot, nobody will exist. Nothing will exist. Just like you see the example of Iraq and Syria and Libya, all institutions collapsed if, when they did not rise when they had to. And this is the last warning for Pakistan institutions to rise. Else, they will see the Indian tanks in Pakistani cities. Thank you, Mr. Zaid Hamid. The viewers, as you saw, we discussed about the Pakistanis' internal problems. And then at the same time, we must consider the external threats that Pakistan is facing as of today. And at the same time, the demands of a separate province and that could lead to a separate country is also not a good we are facing. That's it for tonight. See you all next Sunday. Until then, Allah Hafiz and good night.